What is up everybody? Josh here with Planet Chinchilla and today I wanted to make a quick video for all of you who are new getting ready to go adopt your chinchilla about what you need to do to prepare and what you need in advance to bring your chinchilla home. We will be right back here in just a minute. All right guys, real quick, if you guys like this kind of video, if you find it helpful, make sure you like it down below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you are notified when new videos come out. We do have a new video every single week, so hitting that notification bell and subscribing will let you keep checking out all this useful content. And now let's start diving into the specifics about what you need to know about bringing home your new chinchilla. Another quick reminder guys, any of my recommendations on things that you guys need to purchase for your new chinchilla, I will link it in the description below. There is quite a bit of necessary items that you will need. Tons of options for every single item. Some obviously better than others. So if you want to stick with the recommendations that I use specifically, again, those links will always be in the description below. So feel free to use those. All right, so you have decided to adopt a chinchilla. I am assuming that you're already at the stage where you have actually picked out the chinchilla that you want. Otherwise, that would be step number one for any of you who have not reached that point. What I mean by that is you have tons of different colors and mutations of chinchillas. I personally, I have a standard gray now that is about five years old. I mean, you have ebony, you have violet, you have TOVs, you have white chinchillas, you have tons of options, but keep in mind that not all of those options are always going to be available to you based on where you live. It will come down to what breeders you have nearby or within driving distance. And by driving distance, I do mean like a safe driving distance where it's gonna be easy to transport your chinchilla from the breeder back to your home into the cage, which is a consideration we will talk about here shortly. But that is gonna be step number one. Step number two is going to be your actual cage that you purchase. And guys, when it comes to getting a chinchilla cage, I know I preach this all the time on this channel. I preach it in my blog post. I'm sure everybody's getting tired of hearing it, but you really don't need to look any further than the Crater Nation to the dual level. You're looking at it right now. Um, today is cage cleaning day, so I have some of the stuff out of the cage right now as far as accessories. Her wheel's not in there, and then a few of her other little hiding box type structures aren't in there. But this cage is big, it gets the job done, and they love it. You got four levels they can jump in. You can put the hammock in the top. Again, link will be in the description below. But for the last four years, this cage has been my recommendation, and it is still my recommendation. The Critter Nation 2 dual level cage is the cage to get, especially if you plan on ever getting a second chinchilla, which we will cover a little bit more of that here shortly. But I don't, I don't know how to stress this anymore to you guys. It's durable, easy to clean, big, comes with the under storage down there. I don't really use it. I keep stuff in a different area for her, but this is an awesome cage to get. That is gonna be the, one of the first things that you need to be purchasing before you even get home so that when you get home with the travel cage, you've got somewhere to put your chinchilla. It really brings me back to a step you should probably be considering before you even get your Critter Nation cage or whatever cage you decide to get is you're gonna need some kind of travel cage to get your chinchilla home. Maybe the breeder is gonna supply it for you. I wouldn't take that chance. I would at least call the breeder in advance and ask if they're gonna have some form of a plastic carry cage for you to get your chinchilla home. If they're not going to, you need to get that obviously before you go to pick up the chinchilla. I would show you mine, but it's kind of pointless. They're all really the same. Just make sure it's breathable and that it's big enough. It only needs to be, I mean, hand size about this big or so. Uh, mine just has a front gate that's kind of graded just like the cage of Josalia. Most of them are 20 to 70 bucks on Amazon. I will put the link in the description below for the travel cage that I use, but make sure you get that before you head to the breeder. Uh, because if you don't, you're gonna be in quite a predicament on how you're going to get them home safely in the vehicle. 
especially when you start adding in other factors such as driving the temperatures and the stress that it puts on a chinchilla to travel in the first place. Okay, now that you have the travel cage, you've got your chinchilla home, you've picked out the color of your chinchilla, your chinchilla's already named, and you've got that cage, whatever cage it may be, at home, of course now is the time to start having some fun with it. Now you need to get all the essentials inside the cage, and you need to get all of the accessories that just make it a lot more fun for your chinchilla. Let's kickstart it with the essentials. So. You are going to need pellets and hay. Those are gonna be your two primary food sources. The pellets should be formulated specifically for 4-H chinchilla. If you can't find those, some people will say that you can use different formulated pellets like for rabbits. I've never had that issue. I've always been able to order the formulated pellets for chinchilla. I just get it online. I recommend you do the same. I just buy a very large bag of it. I think it's like a 10 pound bag maybe. And I will also put the link in the description below for that. And then you need your basic Timothy hay, which you can also get in either loose hay or hay cubes. I would get some of both because you don't know your chinchilla yet and they can be pretty picky. So you don't know which one they're gonna respond to more. You might have a chinchilla that likes the hay cubes just resting in the cage that they use to kind of file their teeth down and they like to chew or you might have a chinchilla that loves to just eat the hay right out of the hay feeder, which you will attach to the cage. So if you have food taken care of, common sense says that the next needed item that you are gonna wanna pick up is a water bottle, which I would go with either a plastic or you can use a glass one as long as it has the good hook supports to attach to the cage. I personally use one of the big Lixit water bottles they hold, I think it's like 30 ounces, which is really nice because it gives you plenty of time before you need to refill it. Depending on how often you're checking on your chinchilla, which it should be daily, you'll probably just wanna to top it off. It's always best to have the water bottle full and attached. If I ever have to be away from her for more than 24 hours, I have a second water bottle that I attach. I'm just always paranoid that maybe one falls off or one gets clogged. Better safe than sorry. Chinchillas are extremely low maintenance, so when it comes to doing just those little things like that to keep yourself prepared, I recommend just doing it. Even if it costs you five or 10 extra bucks, then you don't have to worry about it going forward. So of course you have the option of getting treats and other fun things that you can offer them, but those aren't really essentials and they're not needed. If you do wanna get them treats, that is fine. I personally just use things like oats and some of the mixed dried fruit bags that they make for them, which I'll link in the description below. Outside of that, I don't offer my chinchilla really any kind of other miscellaneous food items. I don't really dabble with any fruits or veggies, nothing, because it, they have sensitive stomachs. To me, not knowing 100% what is gonna be okay and what's not, it's just not worth it. Even if she would love it, it, it seems more like a hassle to me to go through that process. So I stick to the basics when it comes to her diet, which is again, the food, the pellets, the hay, and then if you wanna do treats, you can do, you could even use hay cubes technically as a treat, depending on how much they like them. Oats, and then some of the little mixed fruit bags, but you do need to be careful with those. Make sure that they're made for chinchillas. Make sure the sugar content is not too high because it will upset their stomachs and it can cause issues. So once you have the cage set up, you have the water bottle, now you have the food, basic needs are met, you do still need bedding. For bedding, you have two roads you can go down. You can either use Aspen shavings, which I do not recommend, I don't like them. I only used them for like a week. Then I switched over to the fleece liners. If I would have known about the fleece liners before I used the Aspen shavings for a week, I wouldn't have even used them. The fleece liners are fantastic. They are superior to the Aspen shavings in my opinion. You can pull them off, you can throw them in the washer, you can easily clean them and they last forever. I've had the same pair for several years. I have several sets of them, but I can rotate them if I want to. Usually I don't even have to, just when I clean the cage, I can rip those right off the pans in the Critter Nation, throw them in the washer, put them back on, it's soft on her feet, they're just awesome. That is one of the biggest recommendations I recommend getting right away because then you are done buying bedding. No more of the shavings, no more changing those out, just wash the fleece, you're good. 
I use the Piggy Bedspread fleece liners. I will link that in the description below. You also saw them at the beginning of this video if you want to go back on the actual trays because they're custom fit for that Critter Nation cage. They're awesome. Again, link in the description below. Check them out. But if there's a few things that I could really urge somebody to get compared to other accessories for a chinchilla, it is those that Critter Nation cage and then a playpen, which is my next recommendation for a lot of you, depending on your living situation. And what I mean by living situation is not where you live, but how the house is structured. So how easily can you chinchilla proof a room to where they don't have free room access to the whole house? How easily can you keep them away from other pets, even kids accidentally stepping on them or other dangers like electrical cords, or getting underneath furniture that'll make it tough to find them. If you go with a playpen, you eliminate this problem completely. I have not only another video on this topic that you can check out, link will be in the description below. It's just called the best playpens for chinchillas. I also have a full blog post on this topic. To me, it was one of the biggest benefits of something I could purchase to make raising a chinchilla easier. So I want to make sure that I hit that home, not only on this YouTube channel, but on planetchinchilla.com. They're awesome. Mine is the Jess Pet 61 inch. It is again, in that video, you can see the entire setup that I use for it, where it's at in my house. But in a nutshell, it is going to eliminate the need to chinchilla proof. It will help you form a bond with your chinchilla faster because the interaction that you guys have with each other is close. So, when you have them out of the cage, you can scoot that playpen right up to it, open the door. Of course, this is before you actually know how to get a chinchilla in and out of the cage easily. And for those of you who don't know in the beginning, it's not a walk in the park unless you just get lucky. I don't know if that happens for other owners, but for me, learning the basics of picking her up, getting her out of the cage, that was kind of a struggle. The playpen will save your life with that because you can just simply back that playpen up unzip one of the doors, which are pretty small, right to the, the door of the cage and let her come out and jump on you, have fun. Once she's out, zip up the playpen to secure it. And it's just you and your chinchilla in there. In the beginning, they might kind of scoot around and be a little scared of you, but it took like two days for her to be jumping on my shoulders, jumping on my head. It was awesome. It speeds it up, keeps it safe. That is one of the other biggest recommendations I have for you if you are getting ready to bring a chinchilla home. So to recap, you have your basic needs, food, water, the items in the cage, but the things that will make owning a chinchilla that much more awesome, easy, and less stressful would be the Critter Nation cage, the fleece liners, and the playpen. As far as other accessories that you can get for the cage that I would recommend just for basic like exercise needs or to make the cage more fun would be a, a chinchilla wheel, but you got to be careful with this because a lot of them are made like crap, which I mean plastic or they have inserts around the whole wheel where their toes can slip between. If you want to get a wheel, I would really only recommend the chin spin that's made by Quality Cage Crafters. I will link that in the description below as well. But this is basically a silent wheel that is solid construction and it attaches right to the openings on the cage sides. You don't have to worry about overheating with any enclosure, any foot problems slipping, and there's no plastic for them to chew. It's awesome, but it is not required, so you do not have to get that. It is just something I would probably do eventually just to give your chinchilla a little bit more that they can do while they're in that cage. And then a nest box or a hiding box, whatever you prefer to call it, that is a must in my opinion. They need somewhere that they can feel safe. They're like seven bucks on Amazon. Again, link description below, but that's a must. Just get a wood one. That's okay if they chew on it a little bit, but you need one or even a few of those inside of the cage. They like to sleep in there and it makes them feel safe when they do get scared. The same can be said for a hammock. Again, it needs to be safe. Usually you'll hang this from the top of either the bottom level of the cage or the very top of the top level of the cage. I use the Night Angel for my hammock. It was the purple hammock that you saw on the top level of my cage at the beginning of the video. It's been 
great. She doesn't use it every day. I would say she gets in there every three days and it's not necessarily an item that she uses frequently, but every chinchilla is different. Yours might get in there all the time. So take that with a grain of salt. Doesn't mean not to get one, but it's kind of one of those items you can pick and choose if you want to get it in the beginning. And then you have wood ledges. This is another must in my opinion. They're super cheap on Amazon. You can get them already pre-made with the twisties that just attach it to the cage. Get several of them because you want them to be able to not only hop up the ramps and the levels of the cage, but you want them to kind of be able to ping pong around the cage. That's what they like to do. So you can mix and match where you choose to put those. But that, that is another item I would consider a must when you're bringing home your chinchilla. And guys, the last big recommendation I have for you before actually going to pick up your chinchilla is plan ahead for like five minutes. Pick a room in the house that's gonna have the correct temperatures. Last week's video was all about choosing the best spot in the house for ideal temperatures. I will link that video so that you can go check that out. But temperature control is a must for a chinchilla. The hair is too dense, the fur, I'm sorry, is too dense. They can't sweat, so you need a room that stays in that like 60 to 75 degree range with low humidity levels. So wherever that is in your house, whether it's a basement, a main level, whatever the case may be, plan ahead where you're gonna put that chinchilla cage because you don't want it in your bedroom. These guys get pretty feisty at night and at weird hours in the morning, and they will wake you up. So make sure you plan ahead with that small piece of information and you will be in much better shape. And in all honesty, guys, that is about all you need to know about bringing home a chinchilla. A lot of the other information you can find on planetchinchilla.com. Link will be down below for you. But if you head over to the blog, I have tons of posts about how to get these guys acclimated with being held, how to get them in and out of the cage, how to build a bond with them. That's what comes next after you get your chinchilla home. Right now, it's about making sure that they're comfortable for those first few weeks and that they're ready to adapt to you being their owner. Everything else will just come as time passes. If you take the time, spend a little bit of time with them each day, it'll get easier and easier. Again, guys, anything I mentioned in this video, like the cage, the fleece liners, the wheel, any of that, the links are all in the description below. Obviously, choose what makes the most sense for you when it comes to the accessories and the things you get for your chinchilla. As far as the items and their importance, you still need to get them. Whichever ones you choose is completely up to you. Those are just my recommendations. Links are down below. We appreciate you stopping by. Again, if you like this content, we have a video coming out every week now. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you are notified when these videos are put up. And we will see you guys next time.